Hello, welcome to the video lecture series on digital image processing. That when we talk about color image processing techniques, <coughs> generally we have two categories of color image processing. One is called pseudo color image processing. or this is also known as false color so pseudo color processing and the other category is what is known as full color image processing So, we have just said that uh, this pseudo color image processing, the basic purpose of pseudo color image processing technique is to assign different colors in different for different intensity ranges in a black and white image. The purpose is as we have told earlier that given a black and white image our human eye can simply distinguish between only around two dozens of black and white shades or intensity shades. Whereas, uh, given a color, given a color image, we can distinguish among thousands of color shades. So, given a black and white image or an intensity image, if we go for pseudo color uh, processing techniques, that is assign different colors to uh, different ranges of intensity values. In that case, interpretation of such an intensity image is uh, uh, more convenient than the interpretation of an ordinary uh, or simple intensity level image. Now, the basic way in which the pseudo coloring technique can be used, that is as we said that the purpose of pseudo coloring technique is to assign different colors to different ranges of intensity values. Uh, the simplest approach in which this pseudo coloring can be done is by making use of intensity slices. So, what we can do is we can consider an intensity image to be a 3D surface. So, as shown in this particular slide that <coughs> given an intensity image say f x y which is a function of x and y. So, different intensity values at different locations of x and y if we consider them to be a three dimensional surface then what we can do is we can place planes which are parallel to the image plane that is parallel to the x y plane. So, as shown in this particular diagram if I place such a plane at some intensity value say x i. So, at this intensity value uh, say l i we have placed a plane which is parallel to the x y plane. Now, find that this particular plane which is parallel to x y plane, uh, this slices the intensities into two different halves. So, once I get these two different halves, what I can do is I can assign different colors to uh, different the, uh, to two different sides of this particular plane. So, on this side I can assign one particular color, whereas on the other side that is this side I can assign another color. So, this is the basic technique of pseudo coloring that is you slice the intensity levels and to different slices you assign different colors. So, in our case we assume let us assume that our in image the intensity uh, values the discrete intensity values in a black and white image 
varies from say 0 to capital L minus 1. So, I have total L number of intensity values in our image, L number of intensity values. So, when we have this L number of intensity values uh, and we assume that an intensity value say L 0, which represents an intensity level say black, this means that the corresponding f x y at location x y where the intensity is L 0, this is equal to 0. Similarly, the L minus first intensity level, I assume that this is equal to white, that means all the corresponding pixels f x y will have a value equal to capital L minus 1. And let us also assume that we have, we will draw p number of planes, number of planes perpendicular to the intensity axis. So, perpendicular to the intensity axis means they are parallel to the uh, image planes and these planes will be placed at the intensity values given by say L 1, L 2 up to say L p. So, first plane will be placed at intensity value L 1, the second plane will be placed at intensity value L 2 and this way the pth plane will be placed at intensity value L p. So, obviously, in this case p the number of planes has to lie from 0 to capital L minus 1, where L is the number of gray level intensities that we have. So, once we place such p number of planes which are perpendicular to the intensity axis, these p number of planes divide the intensities into p plus 1 number of intervals. So, once I divide the intensity ranges into p plus 1 number of intervals, then our color assignment approach will be that a particular location, uh, the color to a location f x y, this color will be equal to c k or instead of calling it f, let me call it some function say h. So, the color assigned to location x y which is h x y will be c k if uh, the corresponding intensity value at that location x y f x y lies in the range v k, where v k is the intensity range uh, which is defined uh, by the planes uh, placed at location l k and l k plus 1. So, as we said that there are p number of planes. So, these p number of planes will divide our intensity range into p plus 1 number of ranges or intervals. And we call these intervals as interval v 1, v 2 up to interval v p plus 1. So, we assign a color c k to a particular location x y. So, we write h x y will be equal to c k if the intensity value at the corresponding location which is given by f x y, this intensity value belongs to the interval v k. Now, by using this simple concept, 
that is you divide your intensity range into a number of intervals and to a particular location in the intensity image you assign a color which is determined by in which of the intervals the intensity of the image at that particular location belong. Then what we get is a pseudo colored image. So, let us see some examples of this pseudo colored image. Here we have say, said that on the left hand side we have an intensity image or black and white image. If I apply pseudo coloring, if I go for pseudo coloring techniques, then the pseudo colored image is as shown on the right hand side. Similarly, the bottom one, this is an image which is an enhanced version of this and if I apply pseudo coloring technique to this particular black and white image, then the corresponding pseudo colored image is given on the right hand side. So, here you find that interpretation in the pseudo colored image or the distinction between different intensity levels in the pseudo colored image is much more easier than the distinction in the corresponding uh, intensity image or grayscale image. Now, this particular application will be more prominent in this particular diagram. <coughs> Here again you find that on the left hand side we have an intensity image or a grayscale image and you find that in these regions the intensity values appears to be more or less flat. That means, I cannot distinguish between uh, different intensity levels which are present in this particular diagram. Whereas, on the right hand side if I go for pseudo coloring you find that these different colors which are assigned to different intensity levels in this particular black and white image, this clearly tells us that what are the different regions of different intensity values in this uh, particular black and white image. So, another application, the other application of pseudo coloring technique is from gray to color transformation. So, here what we have shown is to different intensity intervals we have assigned different colors. Now, when you go for grayscale to color transformation, then what we have to do is if I have an intensity image or grayscale image uh, that corresponds to a single plane, I have to convert that to three different planes that is R, G and B, red, green and blue planes and those red, green and blue planes when they combine together, they are combined together, they give you an interpretation of a color image. So, that kind of color, gray to color transformation can be done by e using this type of transformation functions. So, here you find that our input image f x y, this is a intensity image or grayscale image. Then what we are doing is, this grayscale image is transformed by three different transformations. One corresponds to the red transformation, the other one corresponds to the green transformation and the third one corresponds to the blue transformation. This red transformation gener generates the red plane of this image which is given by f r x y. The green transformation generates the f g x y or the green plane corresponding to this intensity image f x y and the blue transformation generates f b x y which is the blue plane corresponding to this intensity image f x y. So, when these three images that is f r f x y, f r x y, f g x y and f b x y the red, green and blue planes, they are combined together and displayed on a color display, what we get is a pseudo colored image. But in this case, you find that the color is not assigned to different intensity ranges, but the color is decided, the color of the entire image is decided by the corresponding transformation functions. So, the color content of the color image that we will generate, that is determined by the transformation functions that we use. Now, let us see that what are the kind of color images that we can obtain uh, using this grayscale to color transformation. 
So, in this diagram as it is shown on the left hand side we have an intensity image or a black and white image which is transformed into a color image. So, on the right hand side is the corresponding color image and the color transformations that has been used are like this. Here we have used that f r x y is equal to f x y that means, whatever is the black and white intensity image that is simply copied to the red plane. The green plane the f g x y is generated by 0.33 f x y that means, the intensity value at any location in the original black and white image is divided by 3 and whatever value we get that is copied to the corresponding location in the green plane. Similarly, f b x y the blue plane is generated by the by dividing the intensity image by uh, by multiplying the intensity image by a value 0.11 or dividing the intensity image by a value 9. So, by these transformation functions we have generated f r <coughs> the red component f g the green component and f b <coughs> the blue component. And when we combine this red component, green component and blue component the corresponding color image which is generated is like this. Now, here you should uh, remember one point that this color image that is being generated it is a pseudo color image. Obviously, it is not a full color image or the color of the original image is not generated in this manner. So, the only purpose is the different intensity uh, the different intensity regions will appear as different uh, colors in our color image. So, this coloring is again a pseudo coloring it is not the real coloring. Now, we have another example on this pseudo coloring here it is a natural scene where again on the left hand side we have the intensity image or the black and white image and when you go for grayscale to color transformation now the transformations are like this here the green component is same as the original intensity image. So, we have taken f g x y is equal to f x y where f x y is the original intensity image. The red component is generated as one third of x y and the blue component is generated as one ninth of x y. So, by generating the red, green and blue components blue planes from the original f x y in this manner and if you combine them the corresponding pseudo colored image that we get is given on the right hand side. So, here you find that if I compare the earlier image with this in our earlier case the colored image was uh, showing more of red component because in this case f r was same as f x y whereas green and blue were scaled down versions of f x y. Whereas, in this particular case our pseudo colored image appears to be green because here f x y the green component the green plane is same as f x y whereas, red and blue are taken as scaled down version of f x y. So, if we change the weightage of these uh, different functions um, of this uh, different red and blue green uh, red and blue planes the color appearance will again be different. So, a grayscale image can be converted to a pseudo colored image by this kind of conversion by applying different transformations for different red green and blue planes. Now, many of you might have seen uh, the X-ray security machines like what is used in uh, airports. Here you find that uh, this is an X-ray image on the left hand side of a baggage which is screened by an X-ray machine. If you have looked at the screen which the security people checks on the screen this image appears in this particular form, where you find that the background has appeared as red, uh, the different garment bags they have appeared as blue, of course, there are different shades, whereas there is 
a particular region over here which has appeared as again red. Now, again this is a pseudo coloring technique which is applied to obtain this kind of image and the purpose is if you have a pseudo colored image like this, you can distinguish between different objects present in this particular image. And in this particular case, normally the kind of transformation functions for red, green and blue which are used are given like this. The transformation functions are usually sinusoidal functions. So, here what you have is you have this is the rate transformation, this is the intensity values along the horizontal axis we have the intensity values of the grayscale image which varies from 0 to the maximum value capital L minus 1. The top curve sinusoidal curve it shows the rate transformation, the middle one shows the green transformation and the last one shows the blue transformation. And here you find that these different sinusoidal curves, it, is, it appears to be a fully rectified sinusoidal curve, uh, is shifted from one another by uh, certain amount. So, as if we have given some phase shift to this different sinusoidal curves. Now, when the transformations are given like this, so if you have an intensity value say somewhere here then the corresponding rate component will be generated as this value, the corresponding green component will be generated as this value and the corresponding blue component will be generated as this value. So, this particular intensity level will be coded as a color point as a color pixel having red component given by this much, green component given by this much and blue component given by this much. Now, what is done for this pseudo coloring purpose is that you define different bands of input intensity values and the different bands are given to um, different objects. For example, a band somewhere here, the band somewhere here, this is uh, for identification of uh, say an explosive, a band somewhere here is for identification of uh, the garment bags and so on. So, here we find that if this is the band which is given uh, which is used to detect the explosives, the amount of red light which is generated, the amount of red component which is generated by this particular band is the maximum one. So, an explosive will appear to be a red one, whereas for this particular one uh, which is for the garment bags. Uh, where the red component is not as high as this. So, this will not appear as that red as an explosive. So, different band of frequencies are identified or different band of intensity values are identified uh, are specified to identify different types of items and by using this kind of transformation, we can uh, distinguish between different objects which are there in the bags. So, by using this pseudo coloring techniques, we can give different intensity values to different intensity ranges and as we have just seen that we can convert a grayscale or an intensity image to a color image where the color image as is it is a pseudo colored image, it will not really have the exact color components, but this pseudo color image gives us the advantage that we can distinguish between different objects present in the image from its color appearance. Thank you.